In this video, we'll talk about operators. In fact, before this also, we have worked with the operators like addition, subtraction. But let's see what else we can do. Now, in this video, we'll focus on arithmetic operators and relational operators. There are multiple options which you can perform. In fact, with string also or list, we are able to fetch values. Those are also operations. But then if we talk about arithmetic and relational, they are to be different. And we are going to see that here. So let's create two variables here. So I will say a is equal to three and b is equal to two. Simple variables, simple values. And I want to perform some operations on them. So of course I can add these two values, store it somewhere, but let's say we don't want to store it anywhere. I can simply say a plus b. Now what we are doing is we are trying to add these two value, a which is three to a b which is two. And then when you click on enter, you get the value 5, as simple as that. Now, apart from addition, we can also do other operations like a minus b, which is subtraction, then a multiplied by b, which is multiplication, and a divided by b, which is the division. Okay, so you can perform all these operations here. Now, we have also talked about double slash before, which will give you the quotient, not the point value. And if you want to get the remainder, you can use mod to get the remainder, which is one in this case. So these are the simple options which you have. Now, what else we can do? So let's say I want to add A and I want to increment the value by two. So the value of A is three at this case, and I want to increment the value by two. The way you can do that is by saying A is equal to A plus two, as simple as that. And of course, this will also give you five. So the current value of A is five. Makes sense, right? But there's a trick here. This is the plus operation or you can say addition. Uh, but also we have used one more operator here, which is equal to, right? Which is the assignment operator. Now, this is not the first time we are doing this. In, in fact, in the first two lines also, we are assigning them, right? So three is assigned to A, two is assigned to B. So that's your assignment operator. Okay, but then if you want to perform this operation, where if you can see, we are incrementing A itself. So can't we just use some shortcuts? And yes, we do have shortcuts. We can say A plus. So we want to increment A, but but how much? So if to say two. So we are increment the value of A by two. This is a shortcut also called assignment operator. Uh, or in some languages we call shorthand, if that makes sense. Even this works. If you say A, this is seven now. So of course, A was five and now we are incrementing by two. So this is seven. Uh, in some languages, we also use A++, which doesn't work here. You can see we got an error, but you can use this shorthand. And if you if you want to increment just by one, you can say A plus equal to one, even that works. If you check the value of A, it is eight now. So let me clear it. So that's how you can work with the arithmetic operators and assignment operators. In fact, for assignment, this is a fun thing about Python or amazing thing about Python is if you want to assign values to two variables, uh, let's say X and Y. So if I want to X value, assign the value of uh, six to X, I can do like this. And if I want to assign five to Y, then I have to say enter. And on the new line, I have to say Y equal to five. Can't we just assign those values in one line? And Python says, yes, hold my cup. I should have said something else, but I'm not sure who is watching this video. So x comma y uh, 5 or 6 comma 5 so what we are doing is we are assigning the value of 6 to x and 5 to y and if i say enter let's check the value of x let's check the value of y and they have been assigned so that's how basically you can work with the assignment operator and you can assign two values now if you go back here the operation which we have performed which is a plus b a minus b those are called uh, this plus minus here called binary operators. Now, why they are binary is because we got two operands, right? A and B, and we got one operator. So this one operator working with two operands. But what if you have a single operand? In this case, we can, let's say if the value of A is eight, and uh, I want to negate it. I want to make it minus. So you can say minus A, it will be minus eight. Now this operator here, which is minus, is applicable only for one operand. So that is called a unary operator. Okay, uh, but again, the value of a is still 8. It's just that we are printing it the minus 8. Uh, but if you really want to make it minus 8, the value of a, you can say a equal to minus a, if that makes sense. Now a itself becomes minus 8. So that's the arithmetic and assignment operator. Let's talk about the relational operators. Now here, uh, let's say I got the value of a as 4. 
and the value of b is let's say 3 so we got two variables and two values i can compare them okay now when you compare these two values you can do that with the help of less than equal to or less than or greater than equal to or just less than or just greater than or not equal to and when you do that the result type would be boolean and we have talked about boolean before uh, let me show you what i'm talking about so if i want to check if a is greater than b and in this case yes a is greater than b it will return true if i say a less than b it will return false so this operations results in a boolean value okay and not just less than greater than we can also try uh, you know in maths we do less than equal to using this symbol here we can't we don't have that symbol on the keyboard so we have to say less than equal to b and when you say enter, it is false. It is not less than or not, is not even equal to. But what I will do is I will just make the value of B as 4. Now A and B both are 4. And if I do the same operation again, it says true. Now it is not less than, but it is equal to. So at least one of the conditions should be true. Uh, we can also check for A is greater than or equal to B. Now it is not greater, but it is equal to. So it will return true. So that's how we can work with the relation operators. Also, we have one more. I want to check if they are not equal to. So, or maybe equal to. So, you can say A equal to equal to B. So, it will check if they are equal. Now, why not single equal to? That the way we do it in maths is because single equal to is for the assignment, right? So, if you say this, this is assignment. And if you want to compare, we have to use double equal to. And when you say enter, it returns true. What if you want to check if they are not equal? In that case, you have to say not equal B. So, this exclamation means not. And when you say enter, it says false, it's because they are same. So that's how we can work with the arithmetic assignment and relational operators. Now let's talk about logical operators. First of all, why do we need them? So let's go back to the previous example. Uh, we got the value of A as 4 and B as 4. Okay, both are same. Uh, we should have changed it, right? So let's make it B as 5. Of course, it doesn't matter. But So we got two values now, A is 4, B is 5. And now I want to check if a is less than 10 and i would so of course this will be true and b is greater than 1 and this is also true so both are true makes sense but i want to combine them okay so i want to check them in one line so based on these two values i want to do something you know so in programming basically when you say your software can think your computer can think it's because of these things right where you decide your path based on what result you get in terms of true or false example should i take the umbrella outside when i'm going it depends upon if it is raining of course i have to take the umbrella or maybe it's a rainy season i will take the umbrella or maybe i'm not even going to the office i'm going to play cricket so why do i need an umbrella i want to enjoy the rain while playing cricket so these are the conditions which you check in the same way we got two conditions here right and i want to combine them so maybe it is if it is sunday and if i'm not going to office if it is sunday and if it is raining doesn't matter i will not take the umbrella so i will take the umbrella only when it is monday or weekday and it's a rainy season so in, if the both scenario is true then only i will take the umbrella i'm lazy i know uh, but here if i how do i combine this so the way you do that is very simple you just keep that in one line so First condition, second condition on the same line and you say enter and your Python is not happy. Python says, what are you doing? This is not how it works. Uh, or maybe it says, we don't do that here. Anyway, so if you want to combine these two conditions, this is not how you do it. You have to put something in between. That's how the syntax works. So take this, take these two conditions and in between you say and, okay, like in English, we do that. So... This condition and this condition, if both are true, return true. As simple as that, right? So that's how you combine two conditions. If it is that simple, why we are making the entire video on it? Because there's a trick. Let's say, uh, I, I, instead of using and, if I use or, because we also use that in English. Sometimes we say and, sometimes we say or. Of course, we don't use that in the same place. Based on different scenarios, we use them. But here also it returns true. Then which one you should use? That depends upon how AND and ORD works. Now, first of all, uh, if you are coming from a mathematical background, you might have seen this before. There is something called a true table. Now, see, this condition is true. And this condition is also true. So when you, uh, when you do a AND operation on true and true, you get true. This is true and this is true. And when you do odd operation on true and true, you get true. 
But what about the other scenarios? Example, uh, I will make this as greater than 10. Now, B is not greater than 10. Okay. And in this scenario, this will return true. But if you do the same thing with and, it will return false. So yeah, things are different. It's not same. Because this is true and this is false. Still, still your or says true. This is true and this is false and says false. Now, to understand this more, we have to look at the truth table. Now, let's look at the truth table for and first. Now, let's say we got two inputs, A and B. Or let's not use A and B. Let's say something else. So, condition 1, C1, C2. So, we got two conditions. And in these two conditions, both are true, then you will get true. We are talking about and here. So, and means both are true, then true. If the first one is true, second is false, it will be false. Let's say in the third one, first one is false, second is true, it will be false. And if both are false, it will be false. That's how AND works. So only place where you get the true in the output is if both are true. On the other hand, if you talk about OR operations, if both the conditions are true, of course you will get true. If one of them is true, also you will get true. So let's say true false, it is true. False true, it is true. False false is false. So the only way you will get false is both should be false. Example, let's use OR here. And let's make this both as greater than 10. Then you will get false because both are false. So this is how AND OR works. But also we got one more which is NOT. So let's say uh, I got result which is true. Okay, so of course if you print result it will be true. If you say NOT result, of course you can't use exclamation here. That's only for the relational operators. But if you talk about logical operators, we have to say NOT. Now what NOT will do is NOT will just reverse it. It will say false. So result was true. If you say not result, it is false. It will just reverse the condition or the output. So those are your logical operators. So that's it from this video. See you in the next part.